Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sophia. Today my word of encouragement is it's on how to deal with spiritual battle or spiritual warfare. Um, I'm going to use my own personal life experience and try to encourage you how to identify spiritual warfare in your in your life or in your family and how to deal with it because it's a natural um, phenomenon. If you don't know the question, you cannot answer. So personally, I would advise anyone going to any kind of struggle, spiritual struggle, if you have identified that there is a pattern running in your life, let's say, for example, you have ha you're having difficulties with your finances, you work so hard, you give to the kingdom of God, you pay your tithe, you still do a bit of supporting church projects, church, church uh, activities, and yet, you do not have financial freedom then there might be a spiritual bondage or spirit of poverty in your life which is a spiritual warfare that you need to tackle you need to go into your mother's family that's my personal example if i'm having difficulty with something i try to trace the root of the problem by doing self-check going to my family if the same thing I'm going to is running to the family that know where the sin is coming from. First of all, check your life. What is the, the pattern that is going on in your, in your life? Then you identify it. Check your mother's life. Did your mother have the same difficulty or is she going to the same problem? Then you know too. Okay. You try to go into your grandmother's life or other members of your family. Are they also experiencing the same financial difficulties? They are working so hard, but yet they cannot eat the fruit of their labor. You know, you are fighting the spirit of poverty. It's so clear that the spirit of poverty is in the family. You will know that there is a welfare, spiritual welfare of spirit of poverty in that family. Then you know how to tackle it. You use the scriptures as your weapon. Then as a usual thing, fasting and prayer you have to decree detach yourself from that bondage of poverty and one scripture that i've got here i've got actually got two scriptures when you read the book of second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 it says therefore if anyone is in christ he is a new creation all things have passed away behold all things have become new so now that you are in Christ Jesus, you have accepted the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior. So therefore, everything has to become new. Your past has to be old and everything has to be new. You can't be in Christ Jesus and still be going through poverty. You can't be in Christ Jesus, still be going to hardship. So what you need to do to tackle this, you need to be praying to detach yourself, disconnect yourself, disengage yourself from that spirit of poverty. One thing you need to do, you need to sow a seed. Speak to the Lord. Lord, I am using this as a point of contact. You get a, a, any kind of money, any amount from your heart that you can afford freely, that you don't feel it. Put it in an envelope. Pray over that money. And take it to church just give it out or when you know somebody's going to any difficulty just use that money as a sacrifice give it out to somebody and see the power of god listen this spiritual warfare things is not one day prayer it's not two day prayer it's not it has to be consistent and continuous you have to fast and pray tell the lord that you are now in him you are saved by his grace you are covered by his power so therefore you can be in him or you can be in Christ Jesus. You can be under his grace, under his shadow, and still be going to spirit of poverty. You can't be bounded to all things of the past. You are not in Christ Jesus. So you need to enjoy the benefit of the Lord. You need to enjoy the benefit of the Lord. You can't be under the bondage of poverty. Second thing, if you are going to relationship problem, you are a sweet woman or a sweet man. You give yourself, you are so dedicated in your relationship. You are so loyal. But the men that you meet, I'm speaking for the, from the perspective of women. You meet men, you are so nice to them. You are so lovely, you are supportive. You are there for them when they need you. 
then the moment you get pregnant, they run away. Those are the men, I call hit and run men. They only come in your life, hit you when the, there is an injury, they run off. They leave you alone to take care of your child. Check your life. Check your mother's life. Did she have the same problem? Check your grandmother's life. Did she have the, the same problem? Check the women in your life. Is that the norm in that family? Which means there is a spiritual marriage. There's a stronghold of spiritual marriage. There's a spirit husband in that family. Somebody has initiated a child women in that family to a certain spirit who is driving away all the men that come close to you guys. There is a false spirit, spiritual darkness that is fighting physical men that come into your life. They come so lovely. They come so handsome. They are gorgeous. They are sweet. The man of your choice. But the moment you get to a time of commitment for them to be by you to raise a child, they run. Those hit and run men. You can be in Christ Jesus and still be going to that predicament. If it's not right, there is a spiritual battle in that family. There is a spiritual problem. There is a spirit husband. So the scriptures have to be your, 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 your sweetheart. You have to be with the scriptures. You have to use the word of God. Pray fast. Detach yourself. Proclaim and declare that you are not part of that covenant. You were not there. You did not consent to any spiritual marriage. So you have to disengage yourself. Detach yourself. Divorce that spirit husband. I'm going to read the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. It reads, Stand fast therefore in the liberty by which Christ has made us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. So that yoke of bondage, that you be a single mother. With all due respect, I'm not dissing any single mother. I have been a single mother myself in the past. I'm not dissing anybody. But if it's an ancestral thing, if it's a, a, a spiritual thing, a spiritual bondage, a spiritual warfare, that is what I'm addressing. So please don't get me wrong. I'm not insulting anybody. And if I've offended anyone, please do forgive me. It's, it's not for any of those sort of intention. So when you read this um, passage, let me repeat it again. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has set us free and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You can't be a hit and run victim by any man. Try to read the scriptures. Pray, pray, disengage yourself. Use the blood of Jesus to cleanse yourself. I hold the blood of Jesus to detach myself, to disconnect myself from any ancestral spiritual husband in my life, in my family. I disengage myself from that spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ above all other names. Believers, let's use the scriptures. Let's use faith. Believe in yourself that you're not married to any spirit. You are not a spirit being. You are in Christ Jesus. You are a human being and you are in Christ Jesus. So in the spirit husband, in the spirit wife, that is driving away good men out of your life. That is driving away men that are meant to be there for you, support you, raise a child. The moment you get pregnant, they run away. They leave you alone with the child or they leave you alone with the pregnancy. You have to talk to the pregnancy to, to you deliver that child and raise that child alone. That is not of God. If it's continuous, every woman in that family is having the same problem. A clear signal, spiritual husband, is in operation in that family. There is a spiritual husband with no doubt. Guys, I'm being honest. I'm being, I'm being straight to the point. There is a spirit husband in that family. So you need to tackle it. You need to disengage yourself. If, if you are bold enough to, to, to approach the, your mother, to approach your grandmother, your aunties, tell them that, guys, this is what I've seen. So can we join hands as a family? Let's fast and pray and detach ourselves, disconnect ourselves, disengage ourselves from that spirit husband. Before you do that, there should be righteousness. If you are not righteous, that spirit is not going to go anywhere. All has to be with righteousness. You have to be righteous. You have to be holy before you fight those spirits. Spirit of poverty, you are giving, but you're not getting back. There's a spirit of poverty in there. 
there is a spirit of poverty. You work so hard. You can't save. You can't buy anything of your choice. You fancy something. You want to get it. You can't get it because you know there are other debts that you, 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 are, you need to pay. You are so drenched into debts. You only work to pay debt. There is a spirit of poverty around you. Work against it. Pray against it. Use the scriptures. Use your mouth to say, I am no longer part of this agreement. I was not there. My forefathers, my grandmothers, my grandfathers may have committed this sin, may have invited those spirits into this family, but I stand in Christ Jesus. I am now a new creation. All things are past, and behold, all things have become new. All things have become new. So I am in Christ Jesus. There should be a sign of progress in my life. There should be a sign of prosperity. There should be a sign of progress, pro progression. I need to progress at work. I need to be promoted at work. I shouldn't be sitting, like, stand still, marking time, just marking, just, just standing there, moving your steps. You're not moving forward. Yes, just, just stepping up, up and down, up and down. No, you need to step up, move forward. Because in Christ, there's victory. In Christ, there is blessing. Christ blesses us. The blood of Jesus blesses us. The Christ, the, the God that we serve, he's a God of blessing. He blesses his children. So we can be in Christ and still be going through the whole thing, the whole, the whole systematic things. Guys, please, I'm going to encourage you. I'll leave the, the, uh, the Bible verses underneath the, the video description. Galatians 4. 5 verse 1 stand fast therefore in the liberty by which christ has made us free and do not and do not be entangled again in the yoke of bondage you can't be in christ jesus and still be hustling you can't be in christ jesus you still be living hand to mouth from paycheck to paycheck you can't save there is no blessing from anywhere there is no helper from anywhere there is no blessing which is visitation of the holy spirit visiting you in, in any way no we, we can't continue like that. We need to see the power of God in our lives. We need to see the grace of God in our lives. Victory needs to be our portion. Blessings needs to be our portion. And one other thing I, I, want, to, I want to say. With the men, they move from women one, they impregnate one woman, they run off. They don't stay by the woman. They go to the next woman, have another baby there, they run off. They move to the next woman, they run off. Or some of them even keep two or three women at the same time. Spirit of polygamy. Spirit of polygamy. Another poisonous spirit. Spirit of polygamy shouldn't be your portion. If you were a man and you see that, look, you are changing women too much. Sometimes you don't like it, but that's the predicament you find yourself. You're changing women, one woman to the other, one woman to the other. Sometimes you're doing it and you know that this is going on, but you do not have the self-control to hold yourself back. And come on. This, all these women can be that bad. They all can be that bad. There's something going on. Then you need to start addressing things. What's your dad's life? Is your dad a hit and run man? Did he just impregnate your mother and run? What's your grandfather's life? What's the man in your family's life? You know there's something going on. Guys, you need to tackle it. You can't write an exam when you don't see the questions. So you need to identify what the problem is in your life. The difficulty you're having personally. Then you start working. Getting do your own investigation. Be, be an investigator. You investigate what that problem is. Is it just you? Is it just your mother? Is it just your auntie? Is it just your grandmother? Look around the family. If it's something that is very predominant, then you know you need to tackle it. Don't waste time. Fasting prayer. Stay in your room. Read the Bible. Read the scriptures. And be in agreement with the, with the scriptures. Because the Bible says the word of God is living. It's sharper than the double-edged sword. It's got power. It's got spirit. Believe in it and use it as a weapon. Detach yourself. Disengage yourself. Disconnect yourself from spirit has spirit husband spirit wife spirit of poverty spirit of stagnation people are moving forward you are there you've got all the certificates in your in, 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 you can ever think of you are well educated but you can't move forward you're well educated but there's no progression in your life you are you be, your mother has been renting you're also renting everybody's renting your family no there is no progress the grace of god is not upon anybody in that family guys that is a spiritual warfare that you need to come together as a family. If you can get the whole family to do it, 
that's good. If you get one or two people to help you do it together, that's good. If nobody wants to do it, we are responsible. Everyone is re responsible for their own salvation. You know what you want. You know how hungry you are. You know how hungry you want to progress. You want to, 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 to see, you want to taste sweetness. You want to taste progression. You want to taste success. So fight for your own salvation. Fight for your own freedom. Fight for your own deliverance. Fight for your own deliverance. You can't fight for somebody when they are not in agreement with you. They said, together we stand, divided we fall. So, guys, this is a short message I brought to you today. You know your problems. You know what the difficulties you're having. You know that there is something that I need to address spiritually. That's spiritual warfare. You know what it is. Just identify it. And you start working on it. You pray, you fast, you stand upon the word of God. You detach yourself, you disengage yourself, you deliver yourself from that spirit. You know, in the past, our great-grandmothers, our great-grandfathers, they didn't know Christ, they didn't know God. They go to, they go to um, um, voodoo, get black magic, get, get spirit of wickedness. They go in with intention to, to get solution to their problems. They go with intention to get short-time solution, sh short-time progress. But they have no idea about the consequences of those things will visit them to the 10th generation or to the third generation. All those things, that thing that they've consulted, that they brought into the home, those shrines, those idols that they brought into the family, they had no idea that it's going to be causing damage to generations to come. So if you are in Christ Jesus and you've identified it, Please work on it as soon as possible. Pray fast. Deliver yourself. If you got a Bible believing a man of God, a man of God who believe in the scriptures, not any uh, fake man of God that will lead you into something else. Because some of them, they are deeper into occultism. They are deeper into, into voodoo than any other thing. They are deeper into black magic than, than the problem that you are going to. So, just be careful who you consult for help when it comes to spiritual things. Read your Bible. Stay in your room. Cry out to the Lord. Pray fast. Pray. Read the scripture. Sometimes I read it aloud. I read it aloud. I've been walking in the room and be reading the scriptures aloud. Because I believe that whatsoever power is behind the scriptures, it is working. It will work. So I'll say it aloud. So whatever that anything is, Oh, the power in that scripture is going to move. The power in that scripture is going to move mountains. It's going to break every yoke. Anywhere that your, your glory is being tied up, your blessings is being tied up, the word of God will visit that place. The spirit of the living God will visit that place. The Holy Spirit will touch that place. The Holy Ghost fire will break, will scatter, will exhume anything that has been buried, anything of yours that is in buried, and you see the spirit of restoration visiting your life. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to advise, I'm going to encourage you that please let the scriptures be your weapon. Read the scriptures. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith that you are going to fight it. You will deliver yourself. You can't be in agreement with that spirit. You can't be in agreement with failure, with, po um, with poverty, with um, 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 single singleness, people, men, men making a fool out of you, just impregnate you and run off. That you have to struggle and take off your child all by yourself. It is not fair. But it's not those men's fault. It's the spirit behind you. And sometimes those spirits come through our own fault. When you are committing adultery, you are committing fornication, you are fornicating, sleeping with one man to the other. You invite all sorts of spirit into your life. So we need to watch ourselves too. Personally, you need to watch yourself. Then you tackle things that you have no idea how you got there, but you are suffering the consequences of it. So guys, I'm going to leave you with this one today. Spiritual welfare. How to deal with it. You need to tackle it. You need to identify it. Then tackle it. You need to identify what the problem is. It's your personal problem. I don't know you. You don't, you don't, I don't know you. Let's say, put it that way. I don't know you. So I don't know what exactly you are going to. So just examine yourself, examine your mother's life, examine your grandmother's life, examine those around you, your immediate family, examine their lives. Is it the norm of the day that you know where to start from? We have your scriptures. 
you have the, the, your mouth to pray, you have your mouth to declare the word of God, you have your mouth to disengage, break that marriage. You didn't consent to that. Nobody asked you. You didn't. I, you didn't respond. I do to any covenant. You did not respond to I do in any vows. So please disconnect yourself and see the power of God in your, in your life, guys. I pray that the spirit of the living God give you the strength, fill you to, to embark on this, this journey. Let the Holy Spirit guide your steps, guide your ways, that whatsoever is the problem, the power of the living God will deliver you from that spell, from that black magic, from that voodoo, from that shrine that you've been entangled under, that yoke of bondage that you've been put under without your consent. Spirit of the living God will visit you in that dark hour. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, above all other names, above all other yoke, other bondage, let the grace of the living God be upon everyone going through any difficulty. God, you never feel. The spirit of the God is still living. He will visit you. Your situation will change. There will be blessing upon your life. You will have testimony to glorify the name of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Beloved, I thank you all for your time, for listening to this video. I'm going to encourage you, if you like my video genuinely, please do share them. Comment underneath the uh, comment box and share your ideas. Tell me what you think can be done better. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so and support me in this, in this journey. Shalom. Peace. I love you. Take care of yourself. Bye.